Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And, of course, welcome back to the Sandbox Mode, where last night I may have had a couple of beers, and when I was originally going to simply start off a little bit of a hull so that today we can start building a new ship and I'd have a little bit of a head start, we now have this. So today, I'm going to be finishing off the ship, we're going to be testing out the new heat missiles, which apparently are really, really effective, and I think I'm going to be building a ship where for once missiles will likely be our main weapon. No longer a secondary weapon, even though they are incredibly ammo inefficient, or at least very ammo hungry, maybe they're really efficient, we'll find out that soon enough. I want them as our main weapon. Also, ignore the random block of ammo, and also the random block of AI underneath us. Today is going to be interesting, because finally, we're going to have a medium to large ship, about the same size as the Malal's Will. So for reference, here is the Malal's Will. Now the Malal's Will is no longer a ship I'm particularly proud of, it's really just gun spam on a wooden platform. I think I learned loads from building this, but it isn't really the best design in terms of just building style. It isn't even armoured as well as I originally thought it was in terms of how I've done the armouring. Of course it's mostly made out of wood so it's flimsy anyway, but even how I've placed everything isn't really the best. And now it's also incredibly expensive, since now most things cost more especially weapons and especially the advanced cannons, the Malal's Will now costs 270,000 resources. It used to cost only 92,000, or at least in that sort of area. I remember it being just under 100,000 for one of the versions and just over for another. It's somewhere in that margin, let's say 100,000. So with that, it seems like going up to 200,000 wouldn't be horrendous for an early-ish game vehicle. Anything over that I still think would be too expensive, but remember, you do now get more resources in the campaign, not only because everything's more expensive, but I also believe the initial resource zone is giving more resources, or is going to give more resources in the next update when I'm going to be starting the campaign. So this ship is going to be for that kind of area. Once we have a couple of resource zones, this will be the goal to create something like this, which hopefully will be something I'm a lot more proud of. Also, the advanced cannons over here just almost don't work properly anymore, which is kind of sad. So the Malal's Will is definitely a relic of the past. Soon to be replaced by unnamed ship. The Drunk Lathrix. Also, I really like how I've done the front here. I've just remembered doing that. So, let's get to work. So first off, let's have a look what I've already added to the ship. To begin with, we have a new advanced cannon. It's not the strongest thing in the world, but it is really, really reliable. This thing fires at 35 rounds per minute, and will never stop firing. We could slightly up the fire rate, in fact we could easily make both of these dual barrels, but I kind of like the consistency, and it's more fun to watch something like this rather than just sheer explosive spam, like the old weapons on the Malal's Will. I don't mind it being a bit weaker if it's a bit more fun to watch. Also, I really do need to relearn advanced cannons, that is definitely a skill I have kind of forgot. So that did quite a lot. So as you can see, it's not exactly weak. Next up, we have three of the quad 40mm cannons at the front. These are the medium simple weapons. And in my opinion, they are my favourite out of the three medium size, and they are the middle of the medium size as well. I find them more reliable, I love how they fire, and I love how they look. Could I build a better anti-air weapon out of missiles like the small missiles, or perhaps just an advanced cannon? Almost certainly. But I just really, really love the feel of these things. So, the flying scroll is spawn in. And... There we go. Removed from the game. I just find them really reliable. They tend to get the job done 9 times out of 10, and they are set up on a secondary AI, which means they will be targeting only the small targets, or at least they will be soon, I think. Currently, I only have the one AI, but similar to the mortar ship, we'll have these on a separate one, so they can have a different target prioritization. Other than that, the ship is fairly bog standard at the moment. It is essentially just a hull with quite a bit of armour, but that's just about it. The main thing we're doing today is deciding on if we're going to be using advanced cannons or missiles as the main weapon. I really want to use missiles as the main weapon, but they are just so ammo hungry. I find that having enough ammo on the ship is actually incredibly difficult. Now, ammo will be changed in the next update, I believe, so that we no longer have the passive regeneration, but we store way more per ammo block, and then we have a way of creating 
replacing ammo essentially like how we create fuel with all sorts of specialist buildings, which I don't know if I like the idea or not of. It's going to be really interesting and definitely something I'll have to play around with before I really have any strong opinions. Now, advanced cannons, on the other hand, are really expensive to build. So are the missiles. They are also very ammo hungry but at least they can store loads of their ammo in their clips, which means it takes a long time for them to run out of ammo during combat, so it doesn't really matter how much ammo regen we have until they're completely out, which I believe is 400 shells per gun there, so that's going to take a while. Again, we could massively up the speed of this gun, but I've decided to cap it at 30 at the moment, or 32. I think it can currently go to, I think, 50, maybe a little bit more than that, and we could easily build it to have way more, but I just like how it looks when it fires which essentially is this entire ship in a nutshell at this point. So, let's get to work testing out the heat missiles. So here we are, we have the shaped charge head, uses all immediately connected explosive warheads to blast a stream of superheated armor-piercing copper into the target, essentially shredding the inside of the enemy. So, the idea would be, we have this, but now we have no detection, so... Do they still have... Yep, there we are, the remote guidance. Module uses general purpose processing power and follows the aim point of the mainframe controlling the missile's launch pad. Which also makes this immune to flares and the version of flare which can distract the radar heads. The active radar seekers. What's that called, anyway? Radar target simulator emits radio waves that attracts radar-guided missiles. So, if I ever say flare and I'm talking about it affecting a radar-based missile, that's what I'm actually talking about. So that should be that. That doesn't seem stupidly strong. Actually, it seems alright. That's per missile. We have quite a few of them. 900 ammo each, these are, by the way. We could make them a bit smaller, but let's just give this a go. Let's see if we can take down the inside of a target before the advanced cannon doesn't have damage to the outside. Perhaps the large missiles might be better with this, because I feel like a very high explosive single shot might be better than multiple small ones, because all of that heat damage will be concentrated, and then can perhaps deal some serious damage to, essentially, wherever it's hitting. Let's summon in the Marlin. I've definitely seen that one recently. I'm trying not to spoil myself for too many designs, because again, apparently loads of them have been changed. The small anti-air weapon trying to do something there. Oh, it does have anti-missile properties. That's not great. There we go. Hitting the underbelly, which is probably quite good for the heat weapons. You can see the fragments there coming out. And... Oh, hang about. It's down. It can no longer fly, so I imagine it's destroyed an engine or something. And apparently messed up a spin block. Yeah, it's completely blown out one of these rooms. There's the engine. Oh, yep, I'm seeing lots of cylinders being removed. Okay, that did really well just for one volley. What I really should have done is just turned off the advanced cannon, but still. Because the advanced cannon's actually doing pretty well itself. Yep, you can see the fragments going all the way through. Mostly around here, and yet you can see just loads of sections of loads of stuff is just gone. Okay, I'm actually really impressed with that. What I may do then is add another missile silo at the back here. Turn off the advanced cannon, see how it does with just two silos. Especially since the enemy had anti-missile weapons or anti-missile missiles. So... Overwhelm it and see if we can just take it out in one shot. Or oh, one volley. Is it a volley or a salvo? Or just a bunch? Okay, I've got to be honest. I am amazed by how expensive these are. I really did underestimate it. So the medium missiles, it's 600 per silo. Then 200 per gantry, except for 400 for the top section. Rather than 200. After that, since we're using remote guidance, what we are currently having to use is a load of these general purpose processing cards, which are 100 each as well. 
these are not cheaper than advanced cannons. I take what I said back. Um, it does seem like they are worse. At least, for the size we're currently using, the cannon is definitely bigger than the missiles, but I suppose we're not really checking how effective they are for their cost. So, let's summon in a new target. So, once again, one more Marlin. There we go. Two sets. They are exactly the same as the previous missiles. Oh, except for the variable thrusters. I haven't changed those, so it's just a standard. This time, we are sending it to space. Nope, we are sending it to an early grave. It is now AI dead. Now, of course, that is one of the smaller of the godly targets. So, next, we'll summon in the Plunderer. Either way, though, yeah, these definitely work really well. Do they work better than just pure explosive? Hard to say. Well, actually, we can test out right now. Gonna change them back to regular explosive, test again with the same target, then we'll test again something larger. Lots of just basic tests today. I promise, building very, very soon. Whilst the enemies still have a lot of wooden armor and such, I think perhaps just basic explosive might be worth it because how easy it is to chunk open all that armor. But then once the enemies get a lot sturdier, then I think heat will become a much more powerful source of damage. Because then you don't have to go through all the armor, you can just kind of cheat your way through with all the copper shards. Yeah, I think I'm just going to stick with basic explosive. Sure, heat does have a chance of outright killing a target if it hits the right section, but that's just way more fun. Sometimes missiles just derp. So the question is then, the question I ask all of you, are missiles too cheesy? They are very expensive ammo-wise, it will make our ship a little bit more vulnerable, because look at this ammo block here, and even that isn't quite enough for sustained fire. But it is a lot of alpha strike damage, it will instantly hit the target, almost guaranteed, unless they have a good anti-missile system, which thankfully is actually quite easy to do. It seems like anti-munition systems are as deadly as ever, so taking out a lot of the missiles is good. But it seems like the Deepwater Guard don't have many of those, so it might be a little bit too overpowered and end fights too fast. Whereas the advanced cannons, especially if I build them in this sort of way, in a more relaxed, uh, slow way, it's gonna make for some longer fights. For now, we'll stick with missiles. I may change it though, depending on feedback. Still don't know how many silos I'm going to have. I'm thinking we had one more silo here, which will use larger missiles just to vary things up a little bit. Then that'll be it. So we have one advanced cannon, Two medium missiles, which will be our main source of damage, at least consistent damage, until the ammo runs out. And then some large missiles, which I believe I'm going to use to fire mines, because that's just way, way too fun. So that'll be a cluster missile which fires mines. Might need to use that one in a laser designator, or perhaps remote guidance rather than the radar guidance because I don't want it going against airborne targets if there's a larger airborne target because those mines are most likely not going to hit. There's still some sections which have no armor at the moment so need to work on that fairly soon. Now here's the thing if we only go with a single large missile launcher over here with two or maybe three large missiles as clusters I was gonna say we could stay under the 250 quite easily but the problem with a cluster missile is this each small launcher is 800 resources. How many are we going to need for even two missiles? Uh, a decently sized large missile before, I think was using six or seven of the small launchers. They could have been a little bit less, and it was very large missiles. This time it's going to be a bit smaller since we're going to have them over here like this. That's still pretty big. We might need to limit the size of the large missiles because, again, I don't want to go over 250 for this first design. 
We could just go with large missiles and just have them as explosive, or have them as heat missiles. We don't necessarily need this ship to be the mine deployer. We could always use another ship for that later. Deployer. Why am I saying everything weird today? Yeah, with these things costing so much, I'm just going to stick with two of them. They're both going to be heat, and they're going to have remote guidance, their own AI, which will go for the largest target. Actually, no, they don't need their own AI, because the AI currently using the advanced cannon is trying to go for large targets, so that's fine. I'm going to stick with that as it currently is. There we are. So those will be heat. The mediums will just be explosive for sheer damage. They'll just go after whatever the basic guidance is telling them. The small weapons at the front and back will go for the smaller targets, and that should be enough firepower. And heat shells. That was a lot of lag when that hit. One volley managed to take that out. Okay. Look all that steam escaping. Yep, I'm assuming those heat shells have done a number inside. So they were the large missiles, which, after looking at the stats, are really nasty when it comes to their heat components. Wow, that has boilers everywhere. Well, had. Now it has a lot of steam vents. It turns out, sadly, that the enemy we were just fighting from the Onyx Watch actually spouts steam everywhere, even when it's not damaged. So, a lot of that didn't come from the shots. The heat still did a lot of work, but not as much as I originally thought. Doing some tests versus things like the Plunderer now, and... That was a really bad place to hit, since there wasn't really anywhere for the heat to go. But it does tend to do quite a bit. It's not as reliable as just explosive damage. But it's definitely really good versus heavy armor, so I am going to keep those around. In fact, I'm tempted to remove the advanced cannon and just add some more large missiles. Go completely into the whole missile spam thing. We are a missile cruiser. Missile destroyer? Missile potato. I'm not good with ships. Okay, that removed all of the bottom section there. So if there's anything there of value before, it isn't there now. Advanced cannon? Do you mean loads of tiny missiles? I bet this is going to do absolutely nothing except for look at really extreme. Yep, that's a lot of missiles right there. Did one just bounce? Um, it knocked off a paddle. And now it's going to have a really long reload. So, oh, no, no, it's actually not as bad as I thought. That is really cool looking. Okay, against very vulnerable targets. It's actually quite nasty. Because it's hitting almost everywhere. It's doing almost nothing when it hits just a chunk of armor. But against anything exposed, it's horrendous. Oh, it is devouring ammo, though. Our mediums aren't even on. And look at our ammo go down and down and down. Oh, I'm so tempted by that instead of the advanced cannon. Just go completely into the whole missile cruiser thing. You know what? Since I might end up going advanced cannon after this episode, we may as well just go extreme into that for now. So, let's get this boat completely functioning. I'm going to add the engine, add more ammo, especially since now we have way more space, since this takes up nothing underneath. And add an ability to actually move. That might be nice. Then we'll fight some godly designs. And as long as we win one-on-one, -on -one, I'm more than happy. I love those small missiles. They're so stupid. <laughs> They're so fun. Oh, I love missiles so much. They're so fun to watch in combat. Okay. Need to stop gridding right now. And back to building. Okay, here we are. So for all of our smaller weapons, I want it to be they really, really hate larger targets, and they like things which are going really, really quickly. And that's just about it, really. Then with the other, we'll have the opposite, since that will be controlling at least the larger missiles which will be going off where the AI is targeting. So for the other one, loads of value per block. 
So you can build pretty big steam boilers now. Apparently even the smaller ones are actually a bit more efficient than they used to be, but uh, yeah, apparently the larger ones are even better for that. At least from the limited information I've been told, which pretty much everything in these videos at the moment is just what I've been told and what I'm seeing, so a lot of it could be proven wrong, and I'm definitely going to try and learn as fast as I can, especially with, with advanced cannons, I definitely need to do more with that. So, am I going to go ahead and work on the propellers? Maybe. If I can figure out how on earth these even work. I have completely forgot how to do this. <laughs> oh no, that is... Okay, yep, I'm going to spend an hour or two after the video just relearning how to use the steam boiler. <laughs> It's easy enough to make energy from, but uh forgot how all this works. I need to know that because of the propellers. One thing to mention though is now with the boiler controller UI, there are plenty of really good options. Before you need a control block to make sure you're not constantly burning away materials. But it seems like you can kind of automate a lot of this stuff. Steam jets. Definitely something we need to try out in the future. Also, if you're wondering why I've suddenly gone backwards a little bit in terms of building, it's because I've managed to get the game to crash three times now. <laughs> not only do I not understand the game, I'm breaking it. It's going well. The boiler boils our enemies alive. That then feeds our steam pistons, which then go into the crank. This powers, well, this is then used by the gearbox to generate energy. It can then go into the reduction gear, which can activate our propeller. And our propeller is giving us our forward momentum. If I turn it off, it should also stop still, alright? Ooh. Is it really not able to... Okay, no, it is turning off, it just takes a while, that makes sense. There we go. So now it's just about making this space efficient, because at the moment it's all spread out, because I'm trying to relearn it all. Never really used all of this system anyway. I tended to use the really basic stuff, just the basic steam controllers and turbines. Basic AI is now installed. A really rubbish turret cap has been shoved on top of there. We have basic movement. All of our weapons are sorted out. I have some more ammo now. We have loads of spare engine power. That needs to be sorted. We could use that for anything. I mean, we could use that for shields or something else. But clearly, it's not done. In the next video, I'm probably just going to be finishing this off um, and deciding on the final weapons. I've had loads of fun today just blasting everything. But I think now it's time we give it a final test, just versus a godly, and see how we do. I think we should do well. I am starting to think that missile spam is... It's just too good, especially in the early game. Though saying that, with how much ammo it uses in a drawn-out fight, this could be overwhelmed very quickly. So I don't really know. Again, opinions, please. I'm not too sure, and I'm very, very torn on this. I am still really happy with how the ship's turning out, though it definitely needs a bridge or something here, because it's just so boring. Needs something back here, needs a bridge, needs some cleaning up around the corners. But, for the time being, I am really happy with how it's turned out. Okay then, so the final stats are 190,000 resources and 14.5k volume. So it's actually not all that big, but it is very expensive for its size. Then over here we have the Crossbones, one of my all-time favourite designs, which is a truly, truly fantastic design. It can really destroy a lot of other early designs. It is fantastic. And this is at 19,000, sorry, 197,000 materials, if I can actually read. Now, I wish that was broadsiding a bit more. I just spawned in naturally, so it is going to have a slight disadvantage at least at the very start. If that becomes an obvious major problem, I will simply start the fight again. Okay, looks like it might actually be a problem. Though I'm also running out of time, I will probably have a second fight afterwards. The small missile's not doing too much, but the medium missile's carving through the top section. Sadly, not really going for any of the weapons. Well... That wasn't too fantastic. Okay, incoming cram shells. I want to see how well we can deal with this. 
Ooh, we probably just lost our back missile system. Um, some of them, yeah. We lost some of our missiles there at the back. It's now turning, so his back weapons are about to finally come online. Feel like we were very unlucky there with some of the missile hits, not really hitting any of the weapons and being absolutely bombarded by cram shells. Okay, glad I have a lot of layers of armor at the front there because there's a lot of ammo there. It looks like the missile system, nope, not fully offline still. I am surprised by that. If it takes out our ammo, our fire rate is going to plummet because unlike advanced cannons, of course, we don't really store the ammo. We just constantly drain from the ammo stores each time we fire. Oh, is that got... I'm going to say yes. I'm going to guess yes. Incoming more of the small missiles. Really not doing all that much other than draining our ammo. Yet we are definitely out of ammo. That's a surprise, actually. That shouldn't have happened so quickly, even with the smaller missiles. Perhaps it would be better if we just scaled back anyway, just for more consistent damage. But the enemy is looking pretty beat up as well. It's going to be close, but I don't know who's going to win. I think one good shot. We're definitely down to one ammo storage. Yeah, we are. We are down to one ammo storage. I think. Maybe we just need more ammo in this thing. I think we really do. It's going to come down to, can I take out the last two fully functional... No, the last three fully functional turrets before the cram obliterates the last of our ammo. Oh, that was bad. Yep. Yep, we are now out of ammo, I believe. Failsafe doing fantastically there. That was a good hit. Hit underneath, didn't quite take out the turret, but at least weakened it. Maybe aim point selection might be better to force all the missiles to hit the same place. At least on the smaller missiles. But then it would take away the whole concept of just weakening everything. They just do so little per hit. It's those mediums, they're the only ones really doing it. I think that's going to go straight for the middle, which sadly isn't really what I was aiming for there. Of course, we could get lucky and just take out the AI. But that's going to definitely get lucky. So, yeah, the front's completely gone. So that's our main ammo storage. Don't ask me why it's at the front. So I was actually incorrect. Our back ammo is still there. But it is smaller than the front, so... Just further slowing everything down. Oh, that was a good middle shot there. At least it carved through a lot of stuff. Sadly, of course, though, that is an already destroyed cram gun, and you're just hitting the remains of it there. Well, this is definitely a long fight, which is enjoyable, especially in the campaign, but there it goes. Why, though? Is it too damaged? Ah, now there's the problem. Actually, no. Um, if we had... Okay, so in the sandbox mode, if it's player-controlled, you can't die from too damaged. So what you'd normally do is have what just have both of them controlled by the AI rather than one of them controlled by you, but we obviously didn't get that low, so it wouldn't affect us anyway. Wow. Just completely lost the front there. Okay, well, we eventually won, which was fantastic. And that was a real fun watch. Needs more ammo. So with that, it's currently 2am and I really do need to get some sleep. So after looking at our ship again, I've just noticed we actually lost our backside, not our front, because we were facing the wrong way. So I actually lost the smaller of the two ammo reserves, the large ammo reserve, 
was almost compromised, but thankfully survived. That's why the fire rate wasn't completely annihilated. So after that test, I think it's obvious that missiles can be a main weapon, and I really love the position missiles are in currently. They are now strong, but they're so expensive and use up so much ammo, it is really costly. And there's so many weak points of the ship because of how much ammo it needs. And I still think it needs more ammo to be continuously damaging. So I think other weapons could very well just outdo missiles quite easily. Do I still think they're kind of cheesy? Yes. The reason is, though, they're so easy to protect. Even the larger silos, which I haven't even fully protected, it's so easy just to have a little bit exposed and then protect everything else, whereas other weapons, it's a bit more difficult. And I just feel like I don't want to use an overly cheesy weapon. I'm kind of on the fence. They're better than they used to be because before I either felt they were being too cheesy or didn't do enough. Now I feel like they're in a better position, but I just don't know. Shall I keep a missile cruiser or not? So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video as much as it's been all over the place, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. In the next video, I don't really know. I kind of want to make a ramming vehicle with saws. Thank you, and goodbye.